The wacky bowling battle, the day the pins fought back. It was an unusually rainy Saturday, and the kids of Maplewood Street were itching for something fun to do. Bobby, Mila, and their friends decided to try something they'd never done before, bowling. None of them had ever bowled, but they'd all seen it in cartoons and thought it looked pretty simple. Besides, they were certain it was just like throwing a really heavy baseball. All right, team. Bobby announced as they walked into Wacky Lanes, the local bowling alley. Let's win this. Uh, win what? asked Mila, who was pretty sure bowling wasn't actually a competitive sport where you could win trophies every time. They all looked around, confused, until the alley manager, Mr. Pinwhistle, who had a bushy mustache and wore a purple bow tie, came bustling over. Welcome, kids, he said, grinning. Today, you're going to experience bowling like never before. Pick your balls wisely, and may the pins be ever in your favor. The kids exchanged glances. That sounded mysterious, but they shrugged it off and grabbed the biggest, brightest bowling balls they could find. None of them noticed Mr. Pinwhistle giving a mischievous chuckle as he walked away. Round one, the bowling ball fiasco Bobby went first. He picked up an orange ball with flames painted on it. I bet this one goes super fast, he said, winding up his throw. But as soon as he rolled the ball, it did something strange. Instead of going straight, it took a hard right, bounced off the gutter wall, spun back onto the lane, and then zigzagged toward the pins like it was dancing. The ball wobbled and spun, missing every pin except the one at the end, which it tapped lightly before falling over. One pin. The kids burst out laughing. Nice job, Bobby. Next time, maybe aim for the center, giggled Mila. Round two, Mila's magical ball next. Mila picked a bright pink bowling ball with sparkles on it. Maybe this one will be friendlier, she joked. She took a deep breath, swung her arm back, and released the ball. As soon as it hit the lane, the ball glowed. It started spinning faster and faster, like a mini disco ball, shooting pink light everywhere. Just as it reached the pins, it stopped. The pins wobbled, leaned forward as if to fall, and then straightened up again. The kids groaned. Seriously? Even the pins don't want us to win. Mila cried, shaking her head as the glowing ball rolled itself right back to her feet. Round three, Benny versus the Pin Rebels, it was Benny's turn. He chose a green bowling ball that seemed normal enough, so he confidently stepped up to the lane. But just as he was about to throw, the pins all looked at him and started laughing. Yes, laughing. Think you can knock us down, kid? The head pin called out, its painted on eyes squinting like it was challenging him. Not a chance. Benny blinked, surprised. Did, did that pin just talk? The other kids nodded, wide-eyed, as the pin started taunting them. Oh, this is hilarious, said another pin, leaning into its neighbor. Look at these little humans, thinking they can knock us over. We've been standing here since the 80s. You got this, Benny. Mila cheered, though she wasn't sure if she should be cheering against the talking pins. Benny took a deep breath, then rolled his green ball with all his might. The ball zoomed toward the pins, and just when it looked like he might actually get a strike, the pins jumped out of the way. The ball zoomed down the lane, hitting absolutely nothing. The kids stared, jaws dropping. They can jump? Bobby shouted. Since when can pins jump? The final showdown, the kid versus the pins finally, it was time for the last turn. Little Lila, the quietest and smallest of the group, stepped up with a tiny purple ball. Okay, pins, I'm going to give it my best shot, 
she said softly. The pins were busy mocking each other and didn't notice Lila getting ready. She took a few steps forward, then rolled the purple ball gently down the lane. It wobbled at first, but then it sped up as if it had a mind of its own. Watch out, cried the head pin, noticing the ball at the last second. The little one serious. But it was too late. The purple ball started glowing with sparkly blue energy, spinning faster and faster, almost like it was using magic. The pins tried to jump again, but this time, they slipped and tumbled onto each other, rolling around in a pile. Lila's ball hit them right in the middle, sending all ten pins clattering in every direction. The kids cheered as Lila got her first strike. Even Mr. Pin Whistle popped his head around the corner, clapping with a proud smile. Well done, little one, he said. You broke the pin rebellion. The end of the wacky bowling game as they finished up their game, the kids laughed and high-fived, watching the pins fall back in line, mumbling complaints about how kids these days have no respect for pin traditions. Mr. Pin Whistle handed each of them a small trophy that said, Official Pin Breaker. Don't worry, the pins will be back to normal next time, he winked, as if there might be another surprise hidden in the alley. The kids left, giggling and reliving every funny moment of their wacky bowling adventure. From that day on, every time they walked past wacky lanes, they'd give a little wave, half expecting the pins to wave back.